It is one year since Kraft, the US food group, nailed Cadbury after a highly hostile 18 billion takeover battle. Cadbury finally succumbed after Kraft offered a 50% premium for the UK confectionery maker. Bourneville, the chocolate box village where George Cadbury built his factory and homes to house workers in the 1800s, was at the centre of the storm. People feared the Cadbury heritage would be trampled underfoot, jobs slashed, and that even the chocolate would taste different. I think people are concerned about what's going to happen, A, with Cadbury itself, but also whether it's going to have any effect on the village. And our community's been hit as, you know, go along from to council job losses, MG Rover and the NHS, things like that. We don't want to see another fight in our hands for Cadbury's. I'm here at Bourneville, where Cadbury has been making chocolate like this since 1879. I've come here today to speak with Andrew Pexton, manufacturing manager, who's been here for over 10 years, about life before and after Kraft took over Cadbury. If I'm honest, the, the changes since, since Kraft taking over are, are, haven't been very many. Um, we, we have a, a, a large investment programme here at Bourneville that we've been working through for the 10 years that I've, I've been here and I've been a quite a significant part of that. We've had all of the senior team, we've had Irene herself coming, coming across, paying a real interest, and I think a genuine interest in, in the site and the people here as well. Not everyone would agree with Mr Pexton. Irene Rosenfeld, Kraft Chief Executive, came under attack for being conspicuous by her absence during much of the takeover. In particular, she failed to attend the March meeting of the House of Commons Select Committee. Of course, there are many who say that Latter-day Cadbury was already far removed from its Quaker roots and that its engagement with the local community was fading. We did at times find it quite frustrating to engage with the Cadbury group locally because they had their uh, London-based operations, they had a global agenda, uh, and in a way I think they'd pulled a little of, out of local engagement. You know, we weren't seeing as much civic leadership as we wanted to see, frankly. Uh, <laughs> under Kraft, Cabri has re-engaged. The business ties with the local community may be deepening, but there are still some concerns over how well the heritage will be preserved. I think there is a danger that the heritage can get lost um, in, well, basically what they've bought is a series of brands and great brands and the brands will carry on trading. Um, but underneath, that, what underpins that could, yes, it could get lost. If you visit Cadbury today, if you walk into their um, main auditorium, which is beautiful now, it's a grade one listed building which they've developed into a glass atrium. Um, the central focus of that some years ago, well, actually only a year ago, was a bust of George Cadbury, the founder. Um, Where's the bust? It's disappeared. Um, I actually went to the dentist there a couple of weeks ago and I found it lurking by number two lodge, which is the back door, if you like. For Bourneville, it appears the worst fears have not been realised. At least, not yet. At the end of this year, the guarantee on manufacturing jobs expires. At that time, too, Kraft will be under the gun to produce results from its $18 billion purchase. As the Cadbury Workers' Union points out, Kraft is highly leveraged and is going to have to pay down that debt somehow. Jobs may yet be a casualty. Louise Lucas, Financial Times in Bourneville.